Hello everyone. Whoops, hitting my light. It's time to go live. Alright, if you're just joining me, I am Nicole Steele. I'm the Joyful Stamper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and every Thursday at 11 a.m. I go live and we're going to make two projects today. So I'm just going to bring up my screen so I can see comments. Okay, good to go. So I'm so glad whether you're joining me live or you are watching the replay of this. So I try to keep it to a half hour, but today might go a little bit longer because of the two projects that I've got, but I'm super excited about them. Super excited. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to jump right in and start. It's 11 o'clock. So the first thing I want to talk about is I'm, this is something new I'm doing, creativity kits from the Joyful Stamper, and I'm going to do these every month, and they're going to feature one particular bundle. So this month is featuring the Gather Together bundle, which is a stamp set and a set of dies, and the deadline to order this kit is tomorrow because I have to get the order submitted to Stampin' Up! in order to get everything shipped out by the end of September. But the Creativity Kit, you get four projects. You get twenty, at least $20 of Stampin' Up! product. You're going to get bonus ideas, you're going to get a written PDF, and you're going to get a video also. And the video, I want it to be like a class, like you're stamping with me. So it's going to be slower paced, it's going to be relaxed. Good morning, Sharon! And we're just gonna take our time stamping. It's not a live class, so you can do this whenever you want. You can pause, rewind, fast forward, whatever you want. I just want it to be relaxing. I want it to be as if you are stamping right in my studio with me. So, and I am stuffing these kits full of value. So tomorrow's the last day to order one of these, just send me a me message on Facebook or send me an email at Nicole at the joyful stamper.com and I will put your name on the list. So the next thing that's going on, and this is going on for the whole month of September, the get and go starter kit promotion. Um, if you sign up on my team, you get to pick $125 of product of your choice, which I would recommend the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And they're also, Stampin' Up's also throwing in a package of rhinestones, these two stamp sets here, Queen Anne's Lace and So Much Love, and then 16, a 16 piece card kit. And so this is worth about $50. So you'll get like $175 a product. It's only $99. There's no shipping. There's no obligation, no pressure. Um, I welcome hobby demonstrators and business demonstrators. I'm part of a large, really fun team you can just join and get the discount, which is one of the nicest perks in my opinion. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And thanks for sharing, Sharon. Paper Pumpkin, today's the last day to sign up for this fall themed kit. So um, if you're interested in Paper Pumpkin, go ahead to this link right down here and subscribe to it. Um, and then my cut and emboss special. This is going on the whole month of September too. If you order a stamp and cut and emboss machine in my store, you can pick an embossing folder for free. So you just order the machine in my store and email me which embossing folder you want. If you add on the magnetic cutting plate, I'll throw in a pack of stamp and dimensionals free. So why stamp and dimensionals? Well, because they're my favorite adhesive for using with die cuts. I love, love, love them. So I'm going to throw those in too if you add on the magnetic cutting plate. So if you're interested in that, just head to my store, shop with Nicole.stampinup.net, order yourself that, and then email me your choice of an embossing folder. And that's the whole month of September. So, okay, let's get started with the, oh, actually, before I get started with the projects, I have a drawing. So last week, um, anybody that shared this video and then typed shared in the comments, I entered into a drawing to win some in-color enamel dots. So Mary Jenkins White, I drew your name. So you're winning these enamel dots. Um, you have two weeks 
to email me your address at Nicole at .com. and it's two weeks within uh, the date of today's live class which is September 10th and then I'll pop these in the mail to you so because sharing it helps me I and I'm so appreciative of you guys sharing it so that's why I like to do these prize drawings now and I'm at a point now where I can do them so I'm so grateful so Mary get me your email address or you get me your mailing address please next week's prize I have a spool of this mint macaron metallic edged ribbon it is so pretty so all you have to do to for a chance to win this is hit the share button to this original video and then type shared in the comments so that I know there were actually more shares than I had names last week but unfortunately I couldn't see the names of everybody who shared which is why you need to type shared in the comments that way I can put your name in the drawing so this is the prize for sharing for next Thursday so thanks guys thank you thank you thank you let me tuck those aside I love today's projects and they're not cards they're not cards we're gonna use the magic in the night suite but I'm also gonna show you at the end a Christmas version I made of the project I'm doing today so I'm using everything. You're going to see me use everything in this Magic in the Night Suite. It's on page 53 of your catalog. So if you have the holiday catalog, you can pull it out and take a closer look at it. But we're going to be using all of this. And I love how grown up this paper looks this year. It's not so cutesy and I love that dark look to it. And you can use it for more than just Halloween. That's what I like about it too, like those stripes and these flowers. So even if you're not into Halloween, it's still really, really gorgeous paper. So let's jump in. So um, let me tuck my stuff aside. Get some room going here. Of course, I'm going to run out of room anyways, right? So let me show you what we are going to make today. I saw this tutorial on Split Coast Stampers, which you guys have heard me talk about them before. This is called a Triangle Luminary Box. So it's triangle shaped, that's the bottom. This is the top. And you can use it as a gift box or you can go to the Dollar Tree and get an electric tea light and drop it in there. And I'm gonna turn off the lights for a second to see if you can see it glowing. Let me shut this off. I don't know, can you see it glowing? <laughs> I promise it is. It's like glowing orange. But it's super pretty. Let me turn my lights back on. Okay. There we go. So you don't have to use it as a tea light. You can use it as um, a gift box too. But I just love this. I have a fireplace mantle and I thought how pretty this would look on that mantle so let me get my pieces and we will get started with it so this is what I'm using this is the magic in the night for that magic in the night suite now this has a lot of pieces I'm not gonna lie this project but it all comes together really really nicely and I'm going to go fairly slow so that you'll be able to see everything. Okay, let me get situated here. Okay. So yeah, it looks like a lot of pieces, but you'll see how it comes together. So again, I'm going to have a project sheet that has all the measurements to this project. So you don't have to worry about writing them down. So this is a nine and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock and this is Blackberry Bliss so I'm gonna put the nine and a half inch length at the top and I'm going to score it three inches and I'm going to score at six inches and I'm going to score at nine inches hi Joanne are you enjoying your vacation so I scored that and now I'm going to turn it so now the five and a half inch um, length is at the top and I'm gonna score down here at the half inch mark Okay, and that's all the scoring that we have to do that's it 
But now we need to trim because this is going to be a triangle box. So I'm going to cut off this little square down here. We don't need that. Okay. And I find it helps to cut my corners at a little bit of an angle because they fold much, much neater that way. And now I'm going to snip on these score lines just up to that first horizontal one. And I'm going to angle those cuts too. I don't know if you've ever made a box before and you've noticed sometimes when you fold in your tabs, um, one side tends to be visible because it's sticking up over the edge of the box. Well, snipping them at an angle like this will help avoid that. It'll help avoid it. Okay, so we've got this. Now what we're going to do is take any designer series paper of your choice. I'm using Magic in the Night designer series paper in this case. And these are four and three quarters by two and three quarters. So for this particular pattern, it doesn't matter the direction of it, but some patterns, it does matter. There is an up and a down and a left and a right. So when you cut them, you want to be mindful of that. These tabs here are going to be the bottom of your box. So that should help you know how to properly orient your designer series paper. And I'm going to use liquid glue to adhere these. Now, I am not going to glue these all, I'm not going to put glue all the way to the edge because we have to run this through the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and I don't want the glue oozing out. It did on my first sample and it was a mess. So the glue is not going all the way to the edge, but I am filling it in the center. It's really important that we have the center glued down. We're going to be cutting some windows from that. And I'm going to do the second panel here. I love the strength of multi-purpose liquid glue, but I tend to get it on my fingers and then it, I stick to the paper and everything sticks to me and yeah, so I have to have a big container of baby wipes nearby in order to keep things every all neat and clean and tidy. Okay, I love this pattern. This is pretty peacock. It kind of reminds me of the spiders in this particular set. Okay, so we have that glued down. And now what I'm going to do is die cut some windows into this. And I am going to use these bats right here and die cut them into those windows. So I'm going to grab my um, machine here and we're going to do some die cutting. I always have to be careful. It happens to you all the time, Sharon. Yeah. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. Okay, so I've got plate one, plate two, plate three. And yes, we are going to die cut through two layers. And again, you want to make sure that your tabs, um, this is the bottom of your box. So when you put your die cut in there, you know, then want to make sure you're die cutting the proper way so that it's facing the right direction. I'm putting plate three on top. Oh, and get these straight so they run through. Now we are die cutting two layers of paper here. So it is going to feel a little tight going through, but it'll make it. And I'm going to save these little bats because I'm going to use them to decorate the top of my box. Okay, so when I did this the first time, I had my glue way too close to the edge of my designer series paper here and it oozed out and it got all over my plates and my plates stuck to my paper and it tore the paper and it was just a huge, huge mess. <laughs> so I learned do not glue all the way to the edge. Okay, we've got the second window. And there's actually still a little bit of glue from that mishap on my plate because I can feel my project sticking to it. And now we're going to do the second win or the third window. So this project would lend itself easily to, I mean, any of the larger dies. Anything you can cut a decent sized window in. 
would definitely work to make this luminary box. Okay. Got the third window cut. out of the way. Make sure this is still in camera here. It has a tendency to shift while I'm crafting. Okay, so we have got our box with our windows. Now what I'm gonna do is flip it over, still keeping the tabs on the bottom. And I have got three pieces of vellum. And each piece was cut to four and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And I'm gonna use liquid glue to adhere these. This is going to be the inside of the luminary. And again, I am not gonna go all the way to the edge of the panel because when I put the vellum down and I press down on the vellum, the glue is gonna ooze out a little bit. So I don't want it to ooze out of the sides. I'm using that word a lot, aren't I? <laughs> it's like Sesame Street when you had the letter of the day or the number or the word. My word of the day is ooze. Are there words that you don't like to say? I know in our house, we don't like to say the word moist. We don't like to say the word chunky. Those are all taboo. And there's the second one. You can see it went out there a little bit. And now we're gonna put this one in. I vaguely remember making one of these several years ago and it, it was for Halloween also, but I gave it away because I used to be a Meals on Wheels driver and I liked to make things for the people that I delivered meals to. And there was one guy in particular who loved Halloween. So I gave him my luminary box from that. Okay. So now we have that going on for us. We're going to set this aside for now and we're going to work on the bottom of our box here. Okay. So these are both identical three inches by two and five eighths of an inch. So actually, let's do this. This is gonna decorate the top of our box. This is going to be the bottom of our box, but because they're both the same size, I just, and we're gonna do the same thing to them, that's why I'm showing the, you both of them right now. Now, I am gonna flip my grid paper over because I need these measurements at the bottom here. So. I'm gonna take this piece here, which is the bottom of my box, it's Blackberry Bliss, and I'm putting the three inch, I'm going to put the three inch side along the bottom. And I wanna make a pencil mark halfway, which is the one and a half inch mark. And I'm going to do the same thing with my designer series paper. Now, because I don't want the pencil mark to show, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to mark the back. So I'm putting the three inch side at the bottom and I'm gonna mark halfway at one and a half inch. Now this paper is a little bit darker so you might want to use a pen or something. Now you're going to need your paper trimmer for this next step. And again, let me adjust. Okay. So again, if you are just joining, I'm Nicole Steele. I'm the owner and designer behind the Joyful Stamper. And I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And thank you for joining me and watching me today. Now we want to make a triangle with this piece. So what I'm going to do is line up that pencil mark in my paper trimmer's track. And I'm going to line up the bottom left corner also in my paper trimmer's track. And I'm going to take the blade. Now I notice if I go slowly and I press down firmly, the paper will not shift. Look at that. Glue on my fingers. Okay, so we made this cut right here. Now what I'm gonna do is still keep that pencil mark in my paper trimmer track, and I'm gonna take the bottom right corner and put it in the paper trimmer track, and we're gonna make another cut. And again, I'm going slowly, and I'm gonna press down firmly so that the paper doesn't shift. That's our box bottom. We're going to do the exact same thing with this DSP piece that is gonna decorate the top of our box. So, 
I know this pencil mark is hard to see here, but it, it's the same thing. It was marked at one and a half inch right in the middle. And I'm going to line the pencil mark in the bottom left corner up and hold down firmly and cut slowly. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Line those up. Now we've got those two pieces and what we are going to do now is glue the bottom to our box. So we have to bring back out, actually I'm not going to use liquid glue, I'm going to use tear and tape only because um, it's going to adhere this. I want this to be nice and strong. You could use liquid glue but it's going to take more time to set. Now the the thing with tear and tape though is because it is so strong, once you adhere the pieces of paper together, that's it. If you try to pull them apart, it's going to tear. Okay, and I'm using a bone folder to fold on all my original score lines. That's going to make it so much easier to glue this together. So there's like three layers of paper going on here. So this box is going to come together like this. So I'm going to put some adhesive right there. I'm going to use tear and tape. Find the beginning of this. Do you guys remember the old red liner tape that Stampin' Up! had? You'd peel the red liner off. <laughs> there was so much static going on. That red liner tape, it stuck to everything. I'd be sitting there like this trying to get it off my hand. <laughs> okay. And now that tab, we're going to line it up. Now I have found, despite how strong this is, if I just lightly adhere it together at first, just so I can get placement, I can re reposition it if I need to. And then once I have it the way I want it, then I can go ahead and press it firmly together. Once you do this, it, it's not coming apart. You'll just, it's just not. But that's what I want. I don't want it to fall apart. Now this is going to be the bottom of our box. So we're going to fold those flaps in and that triangle we cut is going to go right on the bottom like this. So you can use liquid glue for this. You can use tear and tape. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and use liquid glue. Using the liquid glue will give me time to reposition the box bottom if I don't get it lined up just right. And then you can flip it over and you can use the rounded end of your bone folder to press it down in there like this. Okay, so that's our bottom. And now we are going to work on the top. Isn't this looking cute so far? Ooh, I love it. Okay. So this is the top. This is going to be the lid of our box. It's four and seven eighths by four and a quarter inch. And we are going to do the same thing that we did with the box bottom. So we're going to find the middle. Now I know it's a little bit of an awkward measurement. Four, halfway of four and seven eighths is actually two and seven sixteenths. But the easiest way to remember that, find the two and a half inch mark and you're just going to go right before it and make your pencil mark. That's two and seven sixteenths, so it's not that hard. It's not too much crazy math. I know a lot of crafters don't like math, but I actually like math. We're gonna cut this into a triangle, though, the same way that we did um, our box bottom. We're gonna line up the pencil mark and the bottom left corner in the paper tracks. And I'm gonna slowly cut it. And then I'm going to line up the bottom right corner and that pencil mark in the track. Close it and slowly cut it. There we go. Okay, so this is a slightly larger triangle because it's going to be our top. Oh, I put the paper trimmer away too soon. Because now what we want to do, we want to score a hat 
one half of an inch in from the edge of this triangle. Now, if you have the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, it actually has a ruler that extends to the other side of the cutting blade, so it'll be a lot easier for you to do this if you have that one. I have one that's 17 years old, so I'm lining mine up at the half inch mark, and I'm gonna close it and score it. And then I'm going to turn my triangle, line it back up again at the half inch mark. If it will stay, I can't get it to stay. Okay. And score that. And now we'll do the third side because you know triangles have three sides. Okay. And that's how you score a half inch in. Whoops. Okay, so we've got this funky triangle. Can you see these little crazy X's right there in the corner? That's what we're going to work with here. Okay. So I'm taking a piece of scrap cardstock. And what I'm going to do is line the top of this scrap piece of cardstock with this score line running horizontal right here and the corner of it is going to go where this X is formed where those two score lines meet and I'm gonna make a pencil mark right down the side there then I'm going to turn my triangle and I'm going to do the same thing here there's a little I'm gonna line this up with this horizontal score line this point is going to go where the X the middle of this X is where the two score lines cross and I'm gonna make another pencil mark and now I'm gonna go ahead and do that so that we're gonna have the same thing on all the three sides so that in total we are going to have six pencil marks I didn't pick a very good scrap piece here because it's got a little chad hanging off of it there line that up so remember we'll have six pencil marks when we are done with this step. Now we're going through all of this so we can make the cuts to make this box lid. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we have these two score lines right here. We are gonna cut the tips of these triangles off right between those two score lines where they end. So I'm gonna cut right here and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut across between those two score lines and turn it and I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, now that's what that looks like. The next step we're going to do, there's a pencil line there and there's a score line there. We're going to cut this little V shape out. That's going to help create a flap for us to fold our box. Okay, so that's what that looks like and I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna cut this little V shape out again between the pencil line and the score line I hope my instructions are making sense I've already made three of these and I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna do the same thing again there's the pencil line there's the score line we're cutting this V section out I'm telling you once you make one of these they're addictive and I can't stop. Here's my tip for you though. Whenever you make a 3D project like this, don't start with your cardstock and your designer series paper. Take some copy paper and make a template and work with it. That way if you make a mistake, you haven't ruined your good paper. So that's what I like to do whenever I start a 3D project. Now, this, there's this pencil line right here is where we're going to fold this tab down. And then we're going to fold it at that pencil line and we're going to align this edge up with this score line right here. And it'll come down very neatly. And you can use your bone folder for this. Okay, and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm folding at that pencil line and I'm going to match that edge up with this score line going down this way. And I'll turn and I'll do the third corner the same way. Okay, now all we have to do 
just glue this together. I won't need that pencil anymore. Okay. Now you could use tear and tape for this, but this is kind of a really tight, um, a small space. So I'm just going to use a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm going to pinch it together to get it to hold and you're going to do that on all three corners. So did you guys have a good Labor Day? I swear my weekend felt like it went forever. My daughter came home from college and we did so much fun stuff. We had a cookout at my mom and dad's house and my mom's friend and my aunt and uncle came over and oh my goodness okay I have to share this I'm so excited and Stampin' Up I promoted over the weekend I'm so happy so thank you because all of you helped to get me to that and it just it totally made my weekend you have no idea no idea so whoop. again the glue so I just want to thank you guys so 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 much for that um, let me see what else I've I've got a little decorative pieces here somewhere. There they are. We're going to start decorating this. So now I cut a 12 inch by 3 8 of an inch strip of Magic in the Night designer series paper. I put some tear and tape on the back and I'm going to glue it around my box lid edge there. And I'll show you how I like to start it to get a nice neat seam here. Rather than start it right at the edge there, I'm going to wrap it a little bit around the corner and just go ahead and tightly adhere this to the box lid edge. I'm going to add some more decoration to it. I got finished with this and then my eye fell on one of the dies in this bundle and I thought ooh, that would look pretty so I had to add it so there's gonna be a little bit of extra there and you can just trim it off just like that okay but we're not done we gotta make this look pretty this is gonna get glued to the top And this is that designer series paper that we cut at the beginning when we were working on our box bottom. That's going to fit right on the lid there, just like that. And if this, this piece I could see I was a little short with the tear and tape, I'm going to put a little dab of liquid glue there. And you can pinch your corners to get nice, sharp edges there. Okay. I've got some little doodads here I cut out. So I die cut some of these bats from black glimmer paper. And I'm gonna glue those to the box. And the other thing I'm gonna do is remember those bats that we cut from our windows earlier? I'm gonna use them to decorate the box lid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this one, so you see it was glued together. The DSP and the Blackberry Bliss was glued together. I'm gonna glue the bottom one, Blackberry Bliss side up, and I'm gonna curl the wings a little bit with my bone folder. And then I'm gonna glue it with some liquid glue and stick that down. Then I'm gonna take this one, the DSP side up, and I'm going to curl the tips of his wings with the bone folder and add some height more towards his body. I want to give him some lift so that the lid of the box is just as eye-catching as the rest of this um, luminary. And I'm going to glue him right on top of the Blackberry Bliss bat. So it's a little bit like three-dimensional. Do you see that? I like that. And then I'm going to take one of these little bats and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to curl his wings and I'm going to make him DSP side up and put a little bit of liquid glue on it. And I'm going to put that right there. It's 
like a little baby bat. Who would have ever thought a bat could be so cute, right? Okay, now we're gonna glue um, these black cut or die cut bats um, from black glimmer paper, glitter, black glitter paper. I'm gonna use glue dots for these ones because I'm gonna stick them on the vellum right here. So for that reason, I find that glue dots work better. This bat is super tiny. Sticking him there. You don't have to line them up perfect. Actually, here, ooh, he popped off. If you want to save yourself a little bit of time, what you can do, if you're making a lot of something, take your embellishments and stick them ahead of time onto the glue dots on your roll right here like this. And then when you're ready to add them, they're all right there and you can just lift them off and put them on your project. And the glue dot will already be stuck to the back. There we go. So when the tea light's in there and it's turned on and it's dark, this is gonna shimmer and shine. So carrying on with the shimmer and shine, I decided to take this die from the Hallowed Magic die set and create out of Blackberry Bliss these edges. And I'm gonna glue them around my box lid. But before I do that, I'm gonna brush on some Wink of Stella to add a little bit of glimmer to them. On this side. See? Yeah. And Wink of Stella is one of those things where it's kind of hard to see on the camera or in photographs, but when you see it in real life, you notice it. So this is a glitter brush. If you don't like to mess with loose glitter, you can paint it on with this brush. The barrel comes with it already in it, and if it happens to run out, you can unscrew this barrel, pour in some rubbing alcohol a little bit, give it a good, and screw the cap back on, give it a really good shake, and that'll help loosen up any glitter that was still sticking to the sides of the barrel, and it'll extend the life of your Wink of Stella brush. Anything to extend the life of our craft supplies is a good thing, right? Okay. Good tool to have. All right, and this I'm actually gonna put on with glue dots also. So I'm gonna stick that, line it up with the edge of my box, push that on, and I'm gonna use a paper piercer to apply the rest of them. And this is gonna be longer than the edge of your box, but it's okay, because you can just trim it. Just when you go to put the glue dot on, make sure you're putting it on the back of the side that you brushed the glimmer paper on, because you don't want to accidentally cover it up by gluing it on backwards. Usually I have music playing when I craft. Do you guys listen to music, or do you watch TV? I can't watch TV while I'm crafting because I get distracted. And then I start watching what's on TV rather than thinking about what I want to do. And then the ideas just don't come. That's why I'm no good at crops and retreats. Because I end up talking to everybody and I don't make anything. Oh, I cut one more than I needed. Hmm, I'll use it for an extra project. So that's the lid, and it'll fit right on the box like this. Isn't that cute? And remember, you can use it as a gift box, or you can put the tea light in there. And there's the top. Now, I told you I had a Christmas version of this. I'll show it to you. I used 
the Snowflake Wishes, um, Snowflake's Snowflake Splendor Suite in the Holiday Mini Catalog to make this one. I was especially tickled with how this die cut turned out. So this is kind of like a frame die cut. You, the centerpiece is what gets removed. And then this is balmy blue glimmer paper. And I used the Snowflake Splendor ribbon to line my box lid up here. So then I die cut some snowflakes out of balmy blue glimmer paper and put those around the side. And then this is the box lid. It's three layers of snowflake. Snowflakes. I did this one in Pacific Point and I did this one in balmy blue and then there's another balmy blue glimmer snowflake. So that's the Snowflake Splendor Suite. Now I can't find any tea lights at the Dollar Tree right now that have a white glow. They're all orange because it's Halloween. So once Christmas comes, I'm sure I'll be able to get somewhere. You could put a strand of lights in here and light them up. That would look pretty too. So I'm just, oh, I can't wait to try this again. I'm going to use some more of that magic in the night paper because I want these all over my fireplace. So aren't those pretty? I love them. Oh, you know what? I actually forgot one more part. And my original sample, I stamped Happy Halloween and I glued it to the bottom of this. And I sanded the edges. So I'll go back and do that. But you get the idea. You get the idea. All right. Let me bring in my second project. This is a popcorn wrapper. So this is microwave popcorn. And I just made a really quick, cute wrapper for it. But there's this technique I saw. Stampin' Up! showed it to us not that long ago, a couple weeks ago, and I couldn't wait to try it. So I did a little embossing folder and heat embossing technique on this tag right here. So I'm going to show you that, and then you'll see the rest of this comes together super quick. So if you're looking for an idea to pass out something other than candy for Halloween, or like I put these in my husband's lunchbox when he was going to the office, now he's at home, but you can put them in your kid's lunchbox too, or like a care package for college, a college student, that would be fun. So that's what I'm going to make these for. Let me pull out this, um, move aside these pieces here. So what I'm doing now is if you put in a $35 order by this Sunday at midnight, I will send you the pieces to make both of the projects that I am making today. Now with the projects today, the designer series paper may be different patterns from the particular suite, but it'll still work. Um, for the projects. So that's a, in my store, $35 order. There's a host code to use, which I'll put in the description. And that's the deadline Sunday at midnight. And then you'll get the project kits for both of these projects today. So this is a 10 inch by six inch piece of designer series paper. And again, I'm using that uh, magic in the night. This is Blackberry Bliss. This is basic black. And I'm going to use tear and tape to adhere this. We're going to wrap it around our popcorn, our bag of popcorn. So if you want to make sure you're putting it in the right place, wrap it around your popcorn first. And you can see you're going to put some tear and tape there and you're going to put a strip right there. I'm not gluing this to the popcorn bag itself, although you certainly could do that. If you were passing them out to trick or treaters, I probably would do that just so it didn't come off in their bag but my kids we don't get too many kids around here trick-or-treating and I'm gonna be making some other things anyways for them so this will probably go in a care package to my college daughter okay we're gonna put this in there and I'm gonna wrap it around here fairly tight you don't have to score anything just press it. I find it's too hard to get it accurate if I'm trying to score it, so I just fold it. And if you want it, if you want to, you can pinch the sides there. So now, if your microwave um, popcorn bags are a little bit different in dimensions, you can adjust the width and the length accordingly. But a 10 inch by 6 inch piece fit these particular bags that I got. So ahead of time, I already um, stamped. Happy Halloween from the Hallow's Night Magic set. I stamped it on basic black in Versamark ink and then I sprinkled white embossing powder on it and I melted it with my heat tool. Then I tore the top of that cardstock there. I liked that rough edge it gave it. 
And the other thing I did ahead of time is I stamped these three spiders from the same stamp set. I stamped them in pretty peacock ink on Cajun Craze cardstock. And then I used this die that coordinates with the stamp, the stamp set, to die cut three of those out. Okay, and this label is which which is what I'm gonna use the technique on. I used the largest label from that die set also. Okay, let's set those aside because we don't need those yet. All right, so I have this label. Now what I'm gonna do is take my um, spider, that's what it is, and a Versamark ink pad. Let me clean off my stamp here. I used a different color on it and I don't want that color to show. Clean it off thoroughly. Okay, so we're using the spider and we're gonna stamp him in Versamark ink all over this label. And I'm gonna turn him all kinds of different directions, up and down. And I did this technique several ways and I liked it best when I had a lot going on on this piece. So I want to make sure I stamp a lot of spiders. And you can't see it yet because it's in Versamark. But you will here in a minute. And now I'm going to take white embossing folder, or white embossing powder I mean, and I'm going to sprinkle it on this label. If you're not familiar with heat embossing, Versamark is a sticky ink that takes a little bit of time to dry. So when you stamp with it and then you sprinkle embossing powder on, the embossing powder will stick to wherever the Versamark ink is. Then I'm going to turn on my heat tool and I'm going to melt this powder. You'll know when it is melted because it'll get very smooth and very shiny. All right, now I'm gonna take this um, cobweb 3D embossing folder and I'm gonna emboss that. You'll give, wanna give this a second to fully dry so that the powder isn't too soft. And this is a 3D embossing folder, which means it's a little bit thicker so I just need to use plate one and plate four. I'm gonna put that embossed label in there. Put my folder down hinge side going into the machine first and then I'll put plate four down and I'm gonna run it through. Okay. Now you still can't see the spiders all that well, but what we're gonna do is take a sponge dauber and some pretty peacock ink. And you're gonna wanna have a paper towel nearby. We're gonna dab some ink on the sponge dauber and we are gonna start covering this. I like to start off light at first since I can always add more color as I go. So there's actually three different kinds of embossing going on here. There's heat embossing, dry embossing, and then emboss resist. I have been finding so many ways to use my embossing folders that I'm actually going to do a blog post in probably another week or so that is a recap of all the different ways I have found to use these embossing folders. Because you know, you, most people you just you stick them through the machine and they put a nice pretty pattern in your paper, but 
there's actually so so much more you can do with this so just keep going until you've got it as dark as you want it to be then you're going to take the paper towel and you're going to lightly buff that label and what it's going to do is remove the ink from those heat embossed spiders so that melted embossing powder is resisting the ink that we just applied So now you've got a heat embossed uh, pattern going on and you've got the dry embossed pattern on top of it. And I love this look. Uh oh, my dog is wanting out of the room. Um, she's growling. This would be really fun to use with like fall leaves um, or plaid or um, the snowflake suite. I think it would look gorgeous with, with any of those. So now we're going to take some of this metallic mesh ribbon and I love this. It looks just like a spider web and it has silver metallic threads running through it. And I'm just wrapping it around this popcorn wrapper and I'm not going to tie it in a bow. I'm just going to tie it in a knot and I'm going to trim it. It's very delicate, but very pretty. And we're gonna glue everything on. So this is gonna get glued on with Stampin' Dimensionals. Give it a little bit of lift. Lily really wants out. What happens is Brian goes outside for lunch every day and sits on the swing and Lily hears him and she likes to go sit outside. And I think that's what's happening. She heard him go outside. Okay, and I'm gonna put that right over top of the ribbon. And everything else is gonna get glued on with liquid glue. So I have my happy Halloween sentiment. Oh, there was one more thing I forgot to do. I knew what I was gonna do. I'm taking my Cajun Craze Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna take the light one first and I'm gonna use the brush tip and I'm gonna flick some ink onto that. Get some splatters going. And then I'm going to take my dark Cajun Craze ink with the brush tip and I'm going to splatter some of that on there too. Now we can go ahead and glue the rest of this on. Okay. And now we're going to tuck in our spiders here and there. Can you hear her? <laughs> She's not being very patient, is she? And I'm gonna put this one right there. Okay. Oh, and I know another thing to add to it. I forgot the iridescent pearls. I'm gonna add them to the bodies of the spider. There we go goodness I'm so happy with these wouldn't that be fun to get and then I've got my little triangle luminary boxes here these are hard to show so those are my projects for today I hope you guys liked them I was really happy about them and I couldn't wait to share them so don't forget to share this video by hitting the shared button and commenting shared and I'll enter your name into a drawing um, what was it the mint macaron metallic edged ribbon and tomorrow's the deadline to sign up for my creativity kits. So I'm super excited about those. I had so much fun designing those projects. So I, I can't wait to send those kits out. They're so much fun to pack out. And I like and I like to put little surprises in there too because I don't know, I just I want it to be a really fun experience for everybody. I want you to enjoy stamping. So thanks so much for stamping with me today, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And again, it's Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. All right, I will see you next Thursday. Bye.